You know, Wes and I have been running around constantly since we started filming this show. So many craft drinks, so many cool people. But let's face it, we're only human and we can only do so much. So, to give ourselves some R&R, &R, we're getting out of the city. You know, sometimes a change in scenery and the calm serenity of the countryside is all you need. So, we're headed to Western Howard County, where Maryland's first tea farm promises to deliver just that. Join us at Heron's Meadow Farm, where we meet up with Lori and Bob, owners of BLTs, on this episode of... Hops, Grounds, and Mash! Hey guys, it's good to see you, Bob. It's really good to see you. Hey, what's going on? How are you doing? How you doing? So, Maryland's first tea farm. Where did you guys get the idea to start Maryland's first official tea farm? Well, Bob and I both loved tea and decided, you know what? Why don't we see if we can grow tea in Maryland? Because I've always wanted a farm, um, engineer by trade, retired, you know, and so this is kind of my second career. What made you kind of choose this area to set up the farm and the tea business? This farm came up for sale, and it was just kind of one of those magical things, but we could see the potential in, in our vision. And you know, we came down the lane, and Bob saw the fishing shack sitting there, and he goes, that's our farm. So did you guys name the farm, or was the farm already called that? Where did the name come from? And also the brand name. The, the BLT brand name, yeah. I mean, that, that was, you know, just that, that sort of light bulb goes on, right? I'm Bob, she's Lori, BL, hey, we're gonna make teas, BLTs. The, the Heron's Meadow Farm name, yeah. It really came out of the wildlife that we see. We've got blue herons that on any wow. given day are down here at the pond and flying the stream, and, <laughs> and that's where it came from. What are you trying to show to the community now that we have our first official tea farm here in Maryland? People who, uh, who drink tea sometimes think of, you know, it's a little old lady drink. Tea is more than just a beverage. It's a history, it's a tradition, it's a ritual, it's an experience. So getting them to try something, you know, that is a higher quality does open up their, their taste buds. It doesn't hurt to try something new and different, you know, be on that hairy edge of something and, oh, yeah. and you know, that's where you stand out. I definitely need to know how tea is made because I don't really know anything about it. So can you guys show us the process? But we'll show you some of the farm and we'll talk through where tea comes from and how it gets to your glass. Excellent, let's check it out. So the first thing you need to know about tea is this is a tea plant. It's called Camellia sinensis. That's its actual scientific term. And the thing to know about that is all tea comes from the same plant. It's down to processing. So since this is really seasonally contingent, when would you normally plant these? So right now we're in December. He was a seed in late February this year. Okay. Wow. We start them inside as seeds, get them to sort of germinate and grow up to about that side. And then in the spring, we harden them up. They come outside, spend summer outside, gives them nice UV sun exposure. In our climate, they got to go back in for that first winter because they're not strong enough to survive. So after uh, you know the plant has grown and essentially been you know picked and such, where does the process go from here? So you pick them off the plant, you do a withering step. We used a sous vide method, so that's a French oh, style of cooking, yeah. right? Okay. We t after we wither our green tea, our leaves, put them into a bag, vacuum seal them, so you suck all that air out of it because you need a low oxygen environment. Yeah. And then you put them into hot water with an immersion circulator. So after the sous vide step? After that, it's all about rolling. And, and realistically, I mean, if you have a small batch of leaves, you can think of it just putting your hands, kind of do the ball thing. People okay. are used to like Play-Doh making a ball type of deal. Yeah. That's really what you're doing. You're gonna take those leaves, you're gonna roll them around, uh -huh. get them balled up, then you're gonna open it all back up. So how much of that do you have to do to make one bag of tea? The three acres or so that we have under plant in 2019, by the time I had the leaves dried, it was probably a pile of leaves about this big. And how many hours would you say go into making just that amount of tea for 2019? Fortunately here, we're able to pick during one day, we can let them wither overnight if we control the environment, and then do the rest of the processing the following day. So we've discussed all the manpower that goes into making the tea. Where does the flavor come from? Well, that's a really good question. Let's head on inside, we'll show you exactly how we do that. Now, depending on what kind of flavoring you're going for, most of the time it's done with an essential oil. What I've gotten here, this is bergamot, which is kind of a citrusy type of thing. It's basically Earl Grey. The whole idea is you're gonna put a light mist on here. We're gonna mix that around and you can see the difference between where you have you the dry leaves. You can smell that immediately. 
Absolutely. Oh yeah, right. wow, it's just hitting me. That's a really good yeah. aroma too. And then it's just a matter of, you're gonna just keep doing the same thing to get the level of flavor that you want. Now, the other method that you can work with when it comes to flavoring is you can mix herbs and stuff in. You start with your base tea, and then you sort of layer those in, whether it's like a citrus, maybe some orange peel type that thing, rose hips, you know. And then when you steep it in the hot water, it releases all that flavor. We do a smoked tea here, which the basically you start with dry black leaves, I throw them in a smoker and smoke them over hickory. We will also import plain black leaves and plain green leaves, and then do a bunch of blends and flavors here at the farm with those. Well, I think you've answered a lot of awesome stuff for us, and now that we've talked about it for so long, I'm ready to try it. I gotta give it a shot too, so shall we? Let's brew up some tea. Excellent, let's do it. Well, we went out on the tour, got a little chilly, and I think it's time to warm up with some delicious tea that we're gonna try. We're here with Lori. Why don't you tell us the first thing we're tasting? What I'm gonna do kind of throughout the tastings is, is take you around the world a little bit. These little cups are known as Unomis. You notice they don't have handles. Right. Ooh. China, Japan, the Asians don't use handles. They traditionally hold them in their hand hold it in their right, balance it in their left. What we're gonna do first is taste our blackberry jasmine. You'll notice the color coming out is very light. Oh yeah. Green teas give you a very light flavor or a light color. That's really cool, well, let's give it a shot. It's very, very warming and it's, it's very inviting. It's, yeah. it's a very unique flavor in the sense that it doesn't insist on itself, it seems like just to kind of just almost like hug you in. Yeah, everything's super balanced. It's not, um, and again, I guess because it's a lighter tea, mm -hmm. it's not really strong, flavorful in your face, but there's still right. plenty of good stuff in right. there. So what's the next stop on this global tour? We're gonna go back to the US. And Americans love their mugs. This is what we drink our hot beverages out of. Okay. So the teapot is a very unique teapot, right? We are big out of the box, let's you know, do something unique and different. Right. So the teapot to me reflects something unique and different. In this pot, we are gonna sample our Fireside, which is our brand new tea for the holidays. It is an herbal, robust based with almond, vanilla, and some cinnamon. Oh, wow. That just brings out the feeling of Christmas immediately. It does, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Just that, that warm coziness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I ever wanted to have somebody start out on tea for the first time, right. this would be perfect. Where are we headed to next? We are going to the UK and the British love their cups and saucers. They have a more traditionally round teapot. The tea we're gonna taste is called our Duchess Grey, which is an Earl Grey with lavender. It's got a very subtle note in there, and it's very, very all-encompassing and warming. I definitely taste the lavender, though, yeah. but yeah. like in a good way. Like yeah. you can, yeah. you're like, that's yeah. lavender, like no yeah, doubt exactly. about it. <laughs> exactly. So again, since this is British, pinky out. Oh yes. Or of pinky course. in. Pinky out. <laughs> pinky out. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> well, thank you so much. We will definitely be back to check on you guys at some point and see what else you've been brewing up. We're excited to see what other flavors you come up with. Awesome. This has been awesome. This has been great, Lori. Good. Thank you so much. Oh no problem. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Hmm. After spending the afternoon at Heron's Meadow, I feel relaxed and ready to hit the road for our next season. Yup, and since we've only tried three of over 30 blends... And they're adding new ones all the time. We will definitely be stopping in again to disconnect from all that stress of the city and see what new teas are brewing. If you'd like to get away for a bit and sample some of these delicious teas, as always, all the information is right below the video. But if you can't make it out to the farm, don't worry. You can find the BLT's brand in local coffee shops, hotels, and farmer's markets. And Lori and Bob plan to roll out many more tasty tea combinations all across Maryland and beyond. You know, tea may not be an alcoholic beverage, but it's still a craft drink shared between friends, and I think that deserves a toast. Wes? Hmm. When the skies are looking bad, my dear, and your heart's lost all its hope, after dawn there will be sunshine, all the dust will go. The skies will clear, my darling. I'll wake up with the one I love the most, and in the morning, I'll make you up some tea and toast. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next season on Hops, Grounds, and Mash. Hops, Grounds, and Mash!